Hi, and welcome to 2017. Boy, the years really fly by. Well, they fly by a lot more than the cars do. When I was a young lad, everyone was thinking that by now, well, we'd all have flying cars. Well, mine still has four wheels and is solidly planted on the ground. But the years do fly by, and as promised, well, we're going to start off 217 with a new series of project videos. And the series is going to be about the V-Block project. Now, I have my stock, 4140, a 2x2 two two, uh, stock. Uh, it's cut a little longer than we need, and it's a cold roll. So the outside of this is quite accurate already. So that's going to be the blocks. We're going to be producing two V-blocks here. And, well, I have a one inch by a half inch hot rolled mild steel. It's probably some 1020 or something of the sort, really not very important. And that's going to be my clamps. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. We're going to start this project off right. And we're going to start it off by studying the blueprint and by establishing a proper sequence of operations. So, I have my prints and I notice that there's two of them. So, first things first, let's start with the assembly drawing. And first thing I notice here is that there's really not very much to assemble. I have my block and I have a clamp and two screws. So part one is the block, part two is the clamp, and part three is the screws. Other than that, this assembly drawing is going to give me my bill of materials. And I can see here that the screws are standard and that I need two of them. I can see that the clamp is going to be made out of a mild steel. C1020, 1010, anything like that will do just fine. And I can see that the block is a 4140 because I'm going to want to harden it uh, because this will be a tool and I don't want it to wear too quickly. Other than that, that's about everything I get here, but it, it raises one question. I look at the quantities of parts to produce and it's clear that this drawing it was made for one V-block. I want to make a set. So that means I'm going to have to double my quantities. Okay. Assembly drawing. The next drawing, well, is my detail drawing. And I start by looking at the, oh, I always forget the name of this, cartouche down at the bottom right. Somebody remind me. What? Header. The name is a header. Okay, I start by reading the header here. And uh, I see that I have three types or, or three dimensional tolerances. Uh, one decimal point, plus or minus 15, two decimal points, plus or minus 5, and three decimal points, plus or minus 2 thousandths of an inch. And that is going to cause me a problem, because if I look at the part itself, the block, well, I can see that it measures 2 inches by 1.7 inches high by 1.5 inches deep. That is a problem because my stock here is two inch square and it's already at two inches. And my dimension here that is two inches on the print well has a plus or minus two thou. I'm not going to be able to clean this up to get that two inches plus or minus two. And if I was producing this for a client, well, I wouldn't think twice about it. I would cut my two inch dimension on the length side and mill or cut the other ones down to the 1.5 and 1.7. That would be wasting a lot of material if I had two inch square material to start with, uh, but it would be crucial to get exactly what the client wanted. In my case, my client is me. So all I have to do here to be able to get the part out of this two inch square and have it hardened and have it ground well, is to change the dimension here of the 2 inch width. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the same tolerance, but I'm going to reduce that from 2 inches to 1 inch 998 
thousandths of an inch. I'm just going to reduce it by two thou. Plus or minus two is my tolerance, so I should be able to clean that up nicely and be within that tolerance. So the only change here that I'm doing, because I'm my own client and I'm happy to do it, is I'm changing the width of the part here from two inches to one inch, 998 thousandths. Doesn't seem like a big change, but, but it's important that we know ahead of time where we're going. So that's what I'll be doing. Now I'm just itching to start to cut something. It's been a while since I've worked in the shop. So before we look at the details of how we're going to go about this, I already know because we've just decided how I'm going to orient the part. And the 1.5 inches is going to be in this direction. And that means that if I cut myself off a block, of about three and a quarter inch in length, I'll be able to get two blocks out of that one. Now, I'm going to do two at a time because that means that I can cut my V groove, I can cut my side grooves all while it's in one piece and then come and cut it in two on the cutoff saw and mill those back ends to get them to 1.5. So let's head over to the cutoff bandsaw and cut this block down to about three and a quarter inches. There you go. My stock is ready. So let's get back to studying that detailed drawing. Remember, the first things that you want to look at on a print, well, are the header and the notes. Why do we want to do that? Well, it's kind of like a condom. If you don't think about it ahead of time, you're rarely going to remember it later on. And if we don't look at the header and the notes now, and we get into the geometry of the part, well, we probably will never look at them. And that can cause us problems. So, let's zoom in here and take a closer look at the notes. Whoa, whoa, whoa not, not that close. Come on, Nimrod, back off a bit. Okay, there's our notes. Now, if I look... I can see that part 4 is to be hardened and tempered to 50 Rockwell. Some of you have already flashed the alarm because there is no part 4 in this project. And that's something you have to watch out for. Errors on prints. Now when you see something and you have a sort of itchy feeling that eh, there might be something wrong, well check a little further. And in this case, part 4 needed to be hardened and ground to uh, 50 Rockwell. Well, that is clearly part 1 and not part 4. I mean, who drew this print after all? Let's check the header. I drew the print. So, sometimes there are errors. I mean, if a hole in a part 
is bigger than the part it goes into, there's probably something wrong. So always make a point of checking prints closely for those errors. And there we've just seen one. The second note here is grind all surfaces indicated with the symbol that you can see there. Now that's important because if I look at the print I can clearly see that most outside surfaces need to be ground and that means that I have to leave some material on there for finishing. That is after the heat treatment. But important here, not all surfaces have that indication of grinding. Uh, the uh, V groove is ground, the 1.7, 1.5 and 2 inch dimensions are ground, but the groove in the bottom of the V and the two side grooves aren't ground. That means that I have to leave material on some surfaces and other surfaces will need to be finished to size right off the bat. And third note is the V must be centered on the block to within one thousandth of an inch. That is also very important because you have to remember that I changed the width of the block from two inches to one inch 998 because that gave me the possibility of using the stock with the width that I actually have on my stock part. And that will not cause me a problem because of that third note. Regardless of the width of the block here, that V must be centered within one thousandth of an inch. That's not one thousandth with a tolerance on it. That is plus or minus one thousandth of an inch. So you can see that notes are important. Now let's look at what you're all wanting to look at. I'm going to take my clothes up. No, that you don't want to see that. What you want to see is the parts. So let's start studying the parts. Just a little reminder to those out there who are baffled by blueprint reading. I have on my website that lazymachinist.com a lesson that covers blueprint reading. It's on page two of the website and it's lesson four. Now, if you don't know how to approach the planning of a sequence of operations, well, don't worry. I also have a video on that and it's lesson seven. It's also important to note that you can download all of the prints for my projects from the first page of my website. It's the big red button. Now just get the language of your choice because I do do them in French and in English. And you can also get or you will get at the same time as you download those prints well a copy or a blank copy of the sequence of operation sheets that you can fill out. First thing that I notice here on the print is that there are two parts on this drawing and since I'm anal retentive well we're going to start with part number one which is the block. It's easy to see here that this cube has a rectangular shape and that it has three major dimensions. Two inches wide by 1.7 inches high by 1.5 inches deep. Now I took the time to read the notes and when I read the notes I discovered that the part has to be hardened and that it has to be finished on the grinder and that means that I'm going to have to let or leave some amount of material on the block after roughing for that heat treatment and ultimate finishing. So I'm going to be shooting here for two inches for the width and that I have no choice because my part already measures two inches and I'll be taking care of that by grinding those surfaces first. We'll see that when we come into the sequence proper and that I'm going to be leaving about thirty thousandths on my two other dimensions. So I'm going to be shooting here for two inches wide, 1.730 inches high and 1.530 inches deep. What we want to do now is run through the part, the part number one, and just enumerate all the operations. That will give us a list of operations, not a sequence of operations because they won't be in order, but it will give us a list that we can then organize into a sequence of operations. 
So, looking at the print, well, we've already mentioned that we have to rough the block out, probably on the shaper, and we've given those rough dimensions already. Then we have to, not then, but I can also see that we have to finish the block on the grinder, and that includes the V groove, but it does not include the three other grooves. We also know from the notes that we have to heat treat the part. I'm going to be using 1500 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit with an oil quench for hardening and 550 degrees Fahrenheit with an air cool for tempering. I also see that I have six holes to produce and they are tapped at quarter 20 so I'm going to be spotting those holes. I'm going to drill a 205 thousandths of an inch diameter for tapping and I'm going to tap and for tapping these holes since they are through holes and not very deep well I'm going to be using a taper tap only. I can also see that I have two grooves to produce, one on each side of the part. I'm going to be doing that on the mill and these grooves, remember, they are not ground. So whatever I end up here with is what I end up with at the end of the project. I have to rough the V groove out. I'll be doing that probably on the mill or maybe on the shaper and remember the V groove has to be ground, so we're going to be leaving 15 thousandths of an inch per side for finishing. Uh, now, if we just said that, well, obviously one operation is going to be to finish the V groove on the grinder. And that is going to come after we finish the block itself on the grinder, because that V has to be centered in or on the block. I have a 1 8 of an inch clearance groove to produce in the bottom of the V. I'm going to be using a slitting saw for that and we're going to do that on the mill. I have a 3 seconds diameter hole to produce through the part. I'll be doing that on the mill or and on the drill with a 13 30 seconds diameter drill. I mean this is not an accurate hole but that hole does need to be chamfered. I'm going to use a 90 degree chamfer uh, for the 13 30 seconds hole and I'm going to be chamfering and opening up to a half inch. Uh, then I have to, I don't have to then, but I, I'm going to have to identify the part and I'm going to do that by punching my initials in the bottom of one of the two side grooves and not too close to an edge. And final operation I can see here will be to break all sharp edges and that's something that will be done with a stone after the part is hardened. So those are all the operations that we have to perform on part number one. Now let's get them in order and fill out our sequence of operations sheet. Well that was exciting. And I, it's important here, I don't want anyone to start hyperventilating. So let's take a few seconds to calm down a little bit. Breathe in and out. And in and out. There. Everyone calm down. It's important because if you thought the list of operations was exciting, well, just wait for the sequence of operations. Words can't even describe it. But now that we're all calmed down, well, maybe we can move on. So let's take a look at our sequence of operation. Um, yeah, oh, sorry. I almost forgot. Wake up, Jim! Now we can move on. Looking at the sequence of operation sheet, I can see that the project's name is V-Block. The part that we're going to produce is part number one. The quantity required is two. Uh, it's prepared by me and the material we need well is 4140 uh, medium carbon steel. Now let's take a look at the operations that we mentioned before but this time in the proper order and the first operation well it's a no-brainer uh, number one is rough out block and we're going to do that on the shaper just to see it go and uh, we're going to be using a hand sharpened tool for that and about a hundred strokes per minute. Second operation will be to mill the side grooves to final dimensions and that's important. So we see the number two on the sketch to the left there and that is one of the two side grooves. Now we have to mill them to their final dimensions because these grooves aren't ground uh, at the end of the project. They stay this dimension all the way through. 
Now for this milling operation we're going to use a three-quarter diameter end mill at about 330 rpm. Third operation, mill v-groove to oversize dimension, use previous grooves for clamping. Now we're going to mill the v-groove to oversize dimensions. Now we have to grind these v's, the, the v-groove, on the final uh, operation. Now if we're going to do that we have to leave material so that we can grind it once the part is hardened so that's very important and i just note here that we're going to be using the side grooves uh, to help to hold the part uh, in the mill for the milling operation and that's why it was important to start with the side grooves first as far as milling operations go and again three quarter end mill 330 rpm fourth operation we're going to be milling our 1 8 of an inch clearance groove and this one also has to be milled to its final dimensions. We're going to be using a slitting saw for that and we're going to be turning around 70 rpm. Now it's important that it's done now after the third operation or in other words after we have already milled the v-groove. When you're using a slitting saw you want to engage the tool in the part the least possible depth. And in this case, seeing as we've already uh, cut or roughed out the V-groove, well that reduces the depth of cut required for this slitting saw, and that's important. Okay, number five, fifth operation. We can see on our little sketch there that it's going to be to drill the 13 30 seconds hole right through the part. This is a straight up drilling operation. i probably do it well, maybe even on the drill press. So we're going to be using a 13 30 seconds drill and we're going to be turning around 600 RPM. I didn't note it here, but we're going to be spotting the hole first. Sixth operation. We're going to spot six holes with a number four center drill at about 1000 RPM. Seventh operation. We're going to be drilling those six holes. Now we're probably going to spot them on the milling machine and we're probably going to be drilling them and step eight or operation eight tapping them using the drill press just because it's so much easier to use. So for the drilling operations we're going to be using a number seven a twist drill. Uh, number seven in letter drills of imperial drills and we're going to be turning around 800 rpm and that is the proper uh, diameter of hole for tapping a quarter 20 thread. So in operation number eight we're going to be tapping that quarter 20 thread and since as I've mentioned before these are through holes and not very deep all we need here is a taper tap to do that job. Operation number nine well we're going to be sawing the block in two equal parts on its length and that will give me my two blocks that have each one end that isn't finished. So we're going to be using our cutoff bandsaw for that around 80 feet per minute. Uh, operation number 10, mill each sawed surface to rough dimension. Now remember, these surfaces, the two ends, one that's already finished and the other one that isn't, already roughed and the other one that isn't, I should say, they have to end up at 1 inch 530 thousandths. Uh, for finishing, we I need 15 thou on each side. So it's important to remember that when you mill each sawed surface, you're doing it to your rough dimensions. Here again, we're going to be using a three-quarter diameter end mill at about 330 RPM. Or who knows, maybe even the shaper. Uh, operation number 11, I'm going to chamfer the 13 32nd holes. That's four holes to a half inch diameter. 90 degree chamfering tool we're going to use here around 50 rpm. And our final operation for now, number 12, in one of the two side grooves on each of the blocks we're going to stamp our initials in 1 8 of an inch letter letters with uh, using letter punches. Now that is where we're at now. We're going to continue on with more explanations when we get a little further on in the project because now I'm really itching to start cutting. In our next video we're going to be firing up the old shaper and well we're going to do that so that we can square up our block. After that we're probably going to mill the two side grooves. 
Now, I don't know when this next video is going to come about. I have several medical appointments and tests coming up in the next few weeks. So, I've sort of lost control of my timetable and other people are deciding where I need to be. It is such a nice day that I decided to head down to the river, the Gatineau River, near my place and take a few pictures. Nature is just beautiful. Actually, it was such a nice day that I decided it would be the right time, the 7th of January, for the first barbecue of the year. So, here is our first barbecue at a nice, sunny, minus 14 degrees. And Herb Blair, eat your heart out. This isn't Texas-style barbecue, this is Quebec-style barbecue.